Hola, hola, tengo una gata, casa de un y mira un casa. Salta y vaya y mira un. Mira el suga y salta y vaya, vaya. Y no más de se acaricia, casi más algunas vagas sí. so maybe we can learn it later. Um, so anyway, before I talk about what you just heard, uh, my name is Irene Perez, and I'm an artist from Spain. And I have a five-year-old, well, almost five-year-old uh, daughter named Maya. So um, the song you just heard um, was created and recorded by Maya last summer. Oh, sorry, I get nervous and... <laughs> So uh, the song you just heard it was uh, created and recorded by Maya uh, last summer when she was, she was, she turned four. She's a summer baby. Um, and at that time she did about a dozen recordings, uh, mainly while um, hiding under our dining uh, room table because she's a very private person when she creates. Um, and... Um, I'll talk more about these recordings and what happened right before and after them. Um, but what I wanted to point out by, um, by showing you this song is how I've realized through these recordings that she did that children are uh, inherently full of creativity and how I think we should acknowledge that, uh, especially in relationship to collaborating with them. Um, the things and ideas that I'm about to share with you, they all come from my personal experience and my experience with my daughter. And I have to say that that experience, it's just beginning, so it's kind of short. So in that experience, there is a lot of inexperience and a lot of trial and error and making things up as uh, we go. So before I, when I started thinking about this talk, I had all these questions and I had conversations with Krista and uh, with another mother artist and all these questions came. Um, so I'm just sharing this here with you. I won't be talking about them specifically, but there are ideas behind the talk I'm giving today and there are ideas that I'm still um, exploring. Um, English not being my first language, uh, whenever I want to talk about something, I usually go to the dictionary to look up the word and make sure I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I do that for also Spanish and, uh, and Catalan, which are the other two languages I speak, because what I've realized is that not um, we might think we know words and what they mean, but sometimes we just don't. So anyway, to collaborate, as you can um, see here, means to work together, especially in an artistic or scientific task. But uh, as you will see throughout my talk, working takes many, many forms when you're collaborating with your child. It could be playing, learning, singing, inventing, exploring, and discovering, and that's part of work, too. Um, so I'll give you three examples of collaborations and uh, to talk about different aspects of, of collaboration. So 
Here's what I've called um, Path to Collaboration 1, Mama, Make Me This, which is a sentence that you hear a lot when you're a mother. Um, so um, here I want to show an example of uh, how, from, how collaboration can arise from caring labor. Um, so, am I not? Yeah, sorry. Um, at the end of 2013, Maya asked me if I could make her a dragon costume for uh, Carnival. We celebrate Carnival in Spain in February. Um, and she made clear that it had to be a colorful one. She didn't want a green dragon. It had to have a lot of color. So to make sure I was understanding what she needed me to do, we made this drawing. Uh, I made the drawing and she colored it out. And I took this drawing with me to my studio and I made the costume for her. As I'm sure you can tell by these images, she was very happy and thrilled with her costume. Um, but that wasn't the only thing that came out of making the dragon costume. Um, it did something else and it, it, what it did it was it made me think about collaborating with Maya for the first time. Because while I was making the costume, I started thinking about using different materials uh, and using color and making word about subject matters that I had never done before. So what happened after that? Oh. Sorry, I don't know why it disappeared. Oh, here, sorry. <laughs> it disappeared from my computer. Um, things like this happen. Um, this uh, gallery owner in Chicago saw some images of the costume I had made for Maya on my Facebook page, and she actually asked me to make a work for a show, um, a show that was about color. And so I did. I did this work, this sculpture, that, of course, it's based on my daughter's costume. But other things have been happening in my studio, like... Um, drawings and works that have started exploring these ideas, the colors and the new materials. Actually, the one in the very far right is a watercolor uh, drawing painting that Maya and I did together. Um, and some other things that have been happening is this, this is the most recent work about it. Still works the same um, subject matter and uh, some new ones like uh, playing with Legos and constructions, which Maya and I are very fond of. Uh, I had never played with Legos as a child. What is it made out of? Um, these two, uh, the one on the top is fabric. It's cut out, cut out fabric that is uh, glued on wood. And the one on the, on the bottom is markers. I use markers to make the, the drawing. Both, uh, I mean, the fabric I've used before, not that type of fabric, because I'm a textile-based uh, artist, but... Uh, the colorful, the, the dragon theme, the construction theme, um, the markers. I've never used markers before in my work. So all these things, um, as you can tell, there are not most of them directly cl direct collaborations with Maya, but they come from our interactions. Um, okay, let me make sure. Okay, here's the second example, the path to collaboration to Mama, show me how to make this. Um, and um, this is an example of how collaboration is born through the teaching and learning experience, which I'm sure most of you already know, it's, n it's not unidirectional. It, it, it's not only from the adult to the child, but it goes both ways. Um, it is well known that imitation is a tool an essential tool for learning, especially for learning sk skills. And what you can see here is actually the first and the last stage of a very intense week when Maya wanted to learn how to draw horses. Uh, she calls them horse unicorn pegasus. Um, so we sat down, and the first thing she wanted me to draw, a horse for her, or a unicorn, rather. So I did. I draw it. She colored it in. And during a week, we went back and forth, making drawings together until she did her own. Um, so what I wanted to show with that, and what I'm going to talk about, is that 
through imitation, um, even if I'm not actively um, engaging my child to collaborate, she's at all times engaged in learning from my, um, uh, my actions. And here's another example. Um, in the late summer of 2013, I was in a residency for three weeks. And out of those three weeks, um, uh, two of, of those three weeks, Maya and my husband were with me. Uh, the work I did in this residency was textile-based, but also sound-based. Uh, I was doing some field recordings and interviews about the subject of home. And um, when I, while I was doing the recordings, Maya wasn't with me, but she was while I was editing, and she became curious about the uh, digital voice recorder. And she wanted to know what that little machine, as she calls it, um, was and so I showed her. I showed her how to use it, and it became her new favorite toys, toy. Um, so that's uh, what happened right before that song you heard um, um, was created. And um, uh, for the last example, I'm gonna talk about what happened after uh, she learned how to use the the recorder. Um, but first, let me just uh, introduce this uh, example, uh, which I call Path to Collaboration 3, Mamas and Children Everywhere, A Whole World of Possibilities. Um, so my husband and I returned to Spain in 2009 after uh, living in Chicago for 11 years. And living abroad was a changing experience at many levels. But for me, it was especially because of the... Um, exposure to other cultures and other ways of seeing um, the world. So now we live in our hometown, which is called Terrassa, which is uh, 30, 35 kilometers west from Barcelona, and experiencing uh, multiculturalism in our hometown is kind of rare, uh, to say the least, But because even though there's like immigration, everybody's very separate and and those interactions just doesn't happen. Fortunately, we have received the visit of uh, several friends from the US, and they have stayed in our house. And uh, a lot of these friends are of um, Asian and Latino heritage, so they look different than us, and they speak uh, different languages. Actually, we just had a visit of a friend of mine who's uh, he understands 23 languages and is able to speak like 13 of them. It's just crazy. Um, so anyway, because of these experiences, Maya has become very curious about uh, learning uh, of other places and other people and other languages that are not uh, her own. And I wanted to make sure that I could keep that curiosity alive because of the many possibilities that brings for her and for everybody. Um, so to make things short, and now I'll focus on this, um, we decided to initiate a pen pal exchange. With, uh, uh, we invited five families, five mother artists and their kids to participate. And for the first letter, um, I edited a CD with uh, an introduction and three of uh, Maya's songs. And we sent that out. Um, I also made like this little booklet that you can pass around and look at it, where, that it has the lyrics and a translation in English because we speak Catalan, and she was singing in Catalan in the song before. And uh, Maya made the, the covers were cardboard, and we made this. She did. She made the, the drawings for the covers. So we have started this exchange, and so far two, two other families are participating. Uh, one of which is Krista and her daughter. And we have um, slowly, because, you know, kids have their rhythm, and uh, we have slowly been exchanging uh, letters, drawings, recipes, uh, questions, and sounds. Um, and I know, I know for a fact, because I'm in constant communication with Krista and with Tessa, that this, um, this pen pal exchange has also... Um, made them think about uh, what it means to collaborate with their kids and all the questions and, and experiences around it. So now I'll just read my final conclusion because I want to make sure um, it's clear and I'll, I'll be finishing up. So here it is. 
As I understand it, art is a way to process experiences and to create new ones for oneself and for others. This is an idea crucial to my practice and to Maya's and I relationship. Collaboration with our children, I think, is different from other types of collaborations in the art production. My experience has been that creating artworks with Maya is a complex, complex intersect, oh, sorry, it's a complex intersection of all the aspects that intervene in our life together and the place and the time we live in, which is Spain in a time of profound social and economical crisis. For me, as a mother of a girl and a feminist, collaboration is also a political act in that it questions the many things directly or indirectly taught as truths, such as the need for competition in our societies, the value of life experiences only in economical terms, and the gradual homogenization of people and culture throughout education. And that's it. Here, if you want to look at...